Room. It's LDRS Creative Release Time and this release is fabulous for any occasion. I'm telling you, even though a lot of Valentine's Day cards are being made from it, but you're going to adore this. Now this is the stitched heart. It double stitches, which is unbelievable. It's called Stitch Heart. It's three dies. And this is the open heart, eight die set. And wait till you see the card I made with this. That open heart has so many possibilities. It's absolutely crazy. Now, the other die that I find fantastic, it's with all my heart. This is an embossed die where you get the stitches on the outside, but it embosses the inside. You use, you know, the knock-knock plate with the soft plate to make those pop right out beautiful now here's the the taste on the resistance this is the stacked uh, sentiments you have anytime stack and a love stack then you have 11 dies for this obviously there's 11 running sentiments going across there they line up with those little squares and they have different lengths and they're all flagged at the ends oh i'm telling you I made a thousand of them and it didn't take me any time at all. I'll show you that later on in the tutorial. I made white with gold, white with black, black with sparkles, black with white, and I used both of the stacked sentiments. The anytime stack, that means birthday, every occasion, and then the love stack with all kinds of love sentiments. It's beautiful. Now, uh, the project that I'm going to show you now, I did many projects. They're going to go up every day. I'm going to try to get them all up every day using this entire release. So is this not beautiful? The 17 stamps in the heart wreath. Then you have the three matching die, uh, the little locket and the key. Now this panda, oh, yes. What I did was, I stamp everything. When I create, I stamp every single die and I cut them out, uh, about three each. Look at this one. This is incredible. It's 35 friend stamps, 35 my friends. And then you have the die, 17 of the matching dies for that. And I have done many, I've been working at this for a week since uh, my stamps all of these uh, stamps and dies arrived to me i've been creating every day and look at this one yeah it looks used doesn't it it has been used this uh beautiful beautiful stencil now you'll notice with ldrs created that's fantastic is they do the coloring and give you some ideas on the back of their packaging which is super super amazing that you get all of this inspiration for you if you're not used to coloring and you want some guidance, you just turn the package over and it'll give you all the ideas. I'm just showing you what's on the back of them. This is by far one of my favorites for sentiments. I have so many sentiments in the jar. And like I said, I die cut everything at the beginning. That's why this tutorial is so long. I am just going to show you how I uh, what I used and then everything is die cut and colored for me to just assemble projects and That's what I did for you. So this will be a long tutorial But the rest of them will not be long because I've already showed you here How I die cut all of them and what is represented in this release? I'll tell you what's what it is. It's awesomeness my friends awesomeness love that double stitch that stitched heart die, you're going to love it. So let's move along. For this first card project, I wanted to do a double shaker and I wanted it to have a bevel. I wanted the first three quarters of the card beveled and I wanted two shakers. And I wanted to use as many of the products as I could. I did an envelope and I did three sides to this card. 
thus the length of the video but they are you won't have all the videos this long uh, in future days to come with all the projects that I've done um, I tried not to uh, like I said you know I do my best with uh, trying to keep it as contained as possible but this one I want you to see that I die cut and stamped every stamp die cut every die and then that's how I work I sit it all out, I do all the coloring, I do everything and then I design. Here I'm just showing you the little mono eraser because I'm using pan pastels on these wreaths. Fabulous. I did one in pan pastels and I did one with the Copics. So I have two fat erasers, the white erasers, click erasers, and then I have the one little tiny one that I use for projects like this because I can erase any of the pan pastel that comes outside the lines. Is that super fun or what? And um, I did the little berries in red, as you can see, and then I went around the wreath. Is this not beautiful? Now, you can, when you stamp this wreath, you can ghost it. And uh, I did that on the right-hand side. I moved it over a bit just to show you that you can get the fullness by just ghosting the stamp on one you know both sides I didn't hear but on the right hand side that you're looking at right now I ghosted some of it so that it would be fuller than the left hand side so if you look at it closely you'll see that so here I'm using the brushes that you get with your pan pastels pan pastels are super super smooth they are amazing because you can erase them and then all you do to have all of that beautiful pastel stay on your project is you can either use hairspray, but I find uh, fixative, you know. I use fixative for a few um, uh, products that I use. Now I took out my fine liners and I went around and I just went in the little spots. You know those spots that it's almost impossible to get in your pan pastel applicator so I thought well this would be fun you would get the beautiful beautiful colors that are in this and so I did my shading with these uh, little markers and I think it blends itself it yields itself to a beautiful look at the end then I use the uh, glossy accents in my case I used a little bit of the crystal lacquer but whatever. Here's the Grumbacher Fixative. You just spray it on like you would hairspray. And then I took my glue or my Glossy Accent Nouveau and I went over all of the berries. And the Fixative just makes it come alive. It deepens the colors whenever you use a Fixative. So it serves two great purposes to use a Fixative. Now this set comes with a locket and of course it has to be gold so I took that or silver so I took the silver pan pastel quick and easy then I applied a little bit of pink because I am you know doing the reds and the pinks I took my Copic friendly liner to go over the image if it wasn't stamped really well that's all you have to do take a, a liner pen and go over it and then the sentiment that says, you uh, hold the key to my heart. I just punched out the little uh, tag for it that's in the set. And then I'm going to use that on another card. But I am going to do a shaker and I'm going to use the locket and the key together. You're going to love this card. Super simple, but yet has such a wow factor to the person that's getting it. Now, I decided to take some of this really creamy, buttery looking pan pastel to add to the three sections just to um, bring alive that beautiful uh, tones in the pan pastels on this wreath. So many crazy ideas for this. And then with the fixative, you'll be able to see it's night and day. Now here, I'm just erasing some, like I said, I did one in a deep red berry and one in a bright berry. And we're going to do Copics on the second one. I tried to use different coloring variations 
and products to show you uh, how nice everything looks in with different using different products out of your stash. You know me, I'm trying to keep to my stash without ordering things and using up what I have because like I always say, there's nothing new under the sun and things that come out new, you probably have something pretty close to it in your stash. So I'd check the stash first before ordering anything and then if you have it, use it. Because I always say I didn't order things because I didn't like it. I ordered things because I loved it. And uh, so why not use the things we have around? Yeah, there's my uh, little input there. So I was going to have this up last night, but my sisters, there's four of us, we have sister dinner once a month. We try to get together once a month. It never works out that way, but we try. So we decided this time to meet at my house and order pizza and wings and salad and things and fellowship at my house. Yeah. So by the time my sisters left, I had laughed so much that my face hurt. And it was really difficult to think straight, <laughs> you know, at midnight to do the finish this voiceover. So I just got up early and I'm doing this and we had a blast and it was like memory time. I, we took out one of my uh, high school books and uh, we were going through it because uh, three of my sisters, there's two years apart. So there's me. 66, 65, wow, I'm making myself older, 65, 63, 61, and then my baby sister's 11 years younger. So obviously, there's the COVID markers that I'm using right there. Um, yeah, I'll try to show them all, throw them in there. You know what? Just use, just grab a pile of grains and don't even worry about whether they match. Uh, as far as numbers, as long as they look good, especially on a wreath, right? I mean, you can't go wrong. So anyway, we took my 1970 high school book out. And we never laughed so hard, honestly. It was hysterical. And uh, yeah, at the way people look back in 1970, and especially in high school, and all the things that you write in your yearbook. And uh, it was quite funny, yeah. So this year, book in 1970, I was in grade nine. And uh, my husband, we were dating in high school. He was in grade 12. <laughs> yeah. So um, it was really funny. I, you know, the things that I wrote and, oh my, it was a blast. We had a really good time. So needless to say that now, because I talked for hours and hours and hours and hours and laughed for hours and hours and hours, my throat's killing me this morning. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, that's what sisters do, right? We just uh, get together to laugh and eat, <laughs> and not particularly in that order. So let's move along. Here's the sentiment stamp that I talked about, the stack, the love stack, and I did an anytime stack. And I stamped them out. I use the small uh, Misty tool here because it's a small image. You know, it's not a huge image. I like the Tim Holtz uh, positioner as well. And I do use that later on. But I went to town. I really did. I used black uh, paper and I did white embossing. I did sparkly right there, this wow glitter. And I did white with gold, white with black. Um, yeah, and I put them in a little bowl that I can use them. Oh, yeah, there's 11 uh, tags that you'll get out of it, you know, little banners, all different sizes. So that makes it perfect when you're making a card. Sometimes you need a wide, a long, excuse me, sentiment and sometimes a little short sentiment works so this is fabulous and see the little corners you see on each side the square that lines up your die this is one of my fav this will not leave my table like this is one of my favorite stamps and dies and i think you'll love it i know you'll love it because look at it i mean it just lines up uh, when i was doing it one time I didn't notice that I had it upside down. <laughs> so 
make sure that you have it right side up or else you know you're you've got short middle uh you're not you know you're not the words aren't gonna make sense they're gonna be chopped off and whatever i'm looking at it going what's wrong with this i lined up the squares yeah it's just upside down carol so anyway yeah it worked out then I, you know, I don't use black embossing powder too often, but because I didn't put enough pressure to put the ink down and I'm out of black hybrid ink, oh yeah, I used, I've already used up two mini black inks and a uh, large LDRS creative black ink. Is that crazy? I use it all the time. I'm in love with hybrid inks. I really am, especially when you're Copic coloring and all of that I just love it it gives you time to emboss because it's a hybrid you know a hybrid is in between the dye that dries quickly and the pigment which takes time and then in the middle you have this beautiful hybrid ink so yes and there you have look at it just fall out of there I love it I really do so let's see what else we're gonna do there that's what I was telling you at the beginning there. This tutorial is long because when I design, and I said this at the beginning, I'm pretty sure, I can't remember, but I like to take out every single thing in the collection. If Whatever Angie sends me for LDRS Creative, I stamp it all out. And I like to color it all, every image. Then I lay it out, and then I design. I like to see it all finished, all colored, and then you can make as many projects as you want. You're not committed to cards. You're not committed to uh, anything but having fun. So that's the way I work. Yet I know there were times when I first started um, creating that I would just pick out the few little items that I was going to use and just use those. But if you take everything, you stamp everything, you're most likely to uh, do more cards. See, I had to turn it around. Oh yeah, I'm watching what I'm doing. Make sure the right words are in the right holes there. <laughs> yeah. So then I lay it all out and then I, excuse me, oh, right. Oh, you just missed that. Anyway, yeah, he pays us a visit. Look at these things. I could have just sat there. I think I did. I just, I love the idea of having a little banner sentiment. Oh, and then I had lunch. <laughs> yeah, twice baked potatoes, sour cream, uh, sprinkled with some bacon and some um, spare ribs and uh, juice. Yes, I had to take a break. I had to take a break and have some lunch. And obviously they were leftovers. I heated them up from dinner the previous night. Yeah, so that was a nice lunch, I enjoyed it. So this dye that makes the uh, emboss on the inside, if you use an embossing mat, that emboss in the center there will raise up more. I didn't because I wanted it to be more flat because I was going to use the uh, stencil because the stencil is the same pattern that's in this dye. So I knew that I was going to use texture paste and raise it up. So I did not want the paper to be raised more than needs be if I'm going to add the um, stencil and stencil in paste because the paste is going to rise up. And then if you have, you know, your main image there too high, it's, it just wouldn't work for me. Now the look is probably nice, but I didn't want that. You can still see the beautiful emboss. My lights make it difficult to see that when you're putting it side by side, but trust me on this. This dye, embossed dye, is gorgeous. And I haven't, I haven't, uh, I looked and I don't have one in my stash like that. So this was wonderful. So here we go. I am going to uh, put some powder down, some baby powder, so that I don't, uh, you know, things don't get all over the place if I decide to emboss. And then I lay out all of the stamps. The sentiments, I don't do all of them. 
unless I know I'm going to use them. But because I had that sentiment stack die that coordinates with the stamps, I just put a couple that I wanted to use on here. So now I had some black ink. And then it, I don't know, I do have a heavy hand, but I wasn't getting it. So you know what I did? I started with two paper. I put two white sheets down and it got much better. Then I put three white sheets in the Tim Holtz thing. I'm just adding more powder. And I put three down. I only had to press it once. It's the perfect height. And I did have it on the right, uh, you know how you have to flip this for rubber stamps and then for clear stamps. I did have it on the clear stamps because I kept looking at that. Why am I not stamping this? But I didn't wash off the, you know, their new stamps and you do have to baby them a little bit before you put the ink on. And, uh, you know, just add some of your oils from your skin. Just rub it across there. See? See? I'm having so much fun. Then I thought, okay, I can't seem to get the middle pressed down high enough. I'm just going to do these little pandas in a circle. And I'm going to use two or three paper high. First time, I'm telling you, the first time. Watch. It's fabulous. I just, I loved it. And it doesn't matter what black ink I use. I always end up a mess. My hands are a mess. Then I get it on the paper. Then I get it on the, um, anything that's near me. And I have to really watch that I stop and I, um, clean my hands off. Yeah, it's important. And by the time I, you know, pat this down, I got to go around again. Because <laughs> I'm taking too long. Yeah. So here we go. Yeah, let's see what happens here. I'm just kind of holding it. I'm going, come on, seep down into that paper. You little pandas, I'm not moving till you do. You, yeah, so you have to work for me. And look at that. Oh, I was so excited. It's just like one time I'm looking at it. Wow, what did I do? I'll tell you what I did. I put three papers high. And then I just took out one of them and I did, oh, I think I did at least five of these little panda sheets. Then I cut them all up and then I start my coloring process. So here I'm putting the dies back. I don't think you want to see me die cut them. I could, you know, an hour tutorial I think is enough for anybody to handle. But because on my next card tutorials that I have ready and project tutorials I have ready to go up. I don't have to show you the process of coloring. You can go back and look at it because I use everything in this actual release. So um, if you wanted to see the coloring, you could go back to this tutorial. That way I can keep the other tutorials short. Yay! Did Carol say short tutorials? Wow, I heard it. Did you hear it, Lucy? I did. I heard her say that. So here we go. I need to color these in. Now with panda bears or anything that's black and white, the easiest thing to do is to first put a light blue. I'm using Copics. Even if you're using a coloring crayon or whatever, I line them up and I start with the lightest blue. And that way, if I decide to not darken up the pandas, it looks nice with the light blue. You don't have to go crazy because you're just trying to cover up the stark white, you know, uh, pandas, anything that is black and white. If it's a little bear, if it's uh, any kind of animal that is black and white, the white is not a true white. You want to gray it out or blue it out. And if you start by pr putting your base color in a, as a light blue, I'm, <clears throat> excuse me, I am talking like a, a uh, you know, a double zero, triple zero blue in the Copics. You're setting a nice base and that way all you have to do is shadow it with some grays if you like. And I'm going to show you a little thing that I do. I take the Copic markers and I go over all of the black parts. So that's the eyes, the ears, the hands and the feet. Okay. And I do it with the black Copics. And then I quickly go to put my shadows in with my light gray. See how I have a really light gray there. I think I'm working with the T's, but I'm not sure. I either work with the T's or the C's. 
in the Copic line, but I will draw out the black. I will grab it with my gray marker. Like, watch. See how I'm pushing that tail, the black that's in that tail? I'm pushing it out so that it looks realistic as far as a shadow. You get that, like a sun, like sun rays in the in in his little bottom there. You'll see it later on. And you'll see how I do grab. That way I don't have to use black. Black can mess you up. If you're trying to get a shadow and you're doing it after the fact with black, see right there. See how I'm pushing it out like sun rays? And I'm only working with one gray marker here, a very light gray. And I'm grabbing a hold of the black that's in the image with the tip of the gray Copic. It will not hurt it. All you have to do is wipe it off on a piece of paper, the black on the tip, and your marker is good to go. But I found this really worked for me. And the reason why I found this out is because I did the black and oh no, look at that. My marker hit it and it's moving it. And then I thought, wow, I'm the one in control here. I'm going to grab that and I'm going to make it work. So here you can see I'm grabbing it out of the top and I'm working it down. Always with a sun ray, you know, grabbing little ones. You see it right here. Uh, that, you know how you want to get a darker tone around your ear, let's say, or your hand. Um, because the sun doesn't get down in there, especially underneath the arm. Things where you can naturally see that, you know, under the eye. Under is the big word here. Anything under. And you see that little guy and you can see his back end with his tail. See how that black marker on the tail worked for me to make a beautiful, uh, natural, fluffy look with only a light gray. And I do have a blue base, remember that. And that's what I worked with. I, I pulled the black out on the tummies. I pulled the black out around the eyes, the ears. And that way you only need to use, you know, two or three markers. So here we go, back to the stash, I grab my Cuddalola. Now I have three Cuddalolas. I love it because if you ch when you get them all charged, you can put any color pen in it, any ink color. See, I've got tons of them, man, tons of them. And you can put any ink, so if you work, you wanna put a gray ink with a black ink and then with a light white ink, you can do that. So I was just, this is a newer one that I opened up. I hadn't opened up before, so I wanted to, and I haven't used it for a while. So I thought, I want to get this right. I know I do have to charge it because it's new. I'm looking for the cord, and I already opened it and set the cord to the side of me. <laughs> you know how you lose things? And, and so now I'm charging it into my laptop. Come on, Carol, find that hole and put it in there. So I'm charging it. Yes, this is a cover onto my laptop. Uh, somebody asked me about the pink there. It's a, a, like a silicone cover to keep my computer from dust. So here we are. I've got it. Where am I going to put it? <laughs> this is a miracle. <laughs> where is this stuff going to go? <laughs> if you can see my desk, it's still like that. You know, I work myself into like a two by two inch square. <laughs> It was really funny. I'm holding it and I'm going, oh, my wrists are killing me. Where am I going to put this thing? <laughs> yeah, but I just slid all that stuff to the side and said, there you go. If you fall on the floor, I'll pick you up later. So here I wanted to have fur, okay? I wanted the fur on these little pandas. Some of them I did with fur, some I didn't. And this Cuddalola pen is perfect. It's like dotalism. It's instant dots. It goes. You can go slow or fast. Like that. <laughs> and then the dots, you make more dots where you want the shade to be, you know, where you want it thickest on the fur. I had a blast. I love using things that I haven't used before. This Dotalola pen. Oh my, it's cut a Lola is the name of the product, but it's dotalism. And instead of me sitting there all day, and that's what I did, I started dotting with my multi uh, fine liner to make the fur. I started dotting with that little uh, liner pen. And then I thought, oh, good night, I've got like 
9,452 little pandas I gotta do here. My wrist is gonna kill me. And then I looked over and I saw my three boxes of the Cuddalola pen. And I said, wow, what? Hello there. I'm getting you out. Then I wiped the dust off the boxes and <laughs> I came over and started doing my dawdleism. That's so cute, dawdleism. Yeah. It just means, uh, see how I did a whole lot above the eye, you know, so it looks thicker. His little panda fur looks thicker. And when everything uh, relaxes on the image as far as your copus in that, it does get lighter. So you don't have to worry. And see here, it is a lighter, I didn't put as much, uh, I didn't draw from the black copic on the arms or legs. I left it a little lighter. I wanted each one of these pandas to be individual, to all have their own little look. I love this one, that this little mama with the baby just hanging on. It's so cute. It is. Isn't it adorable? Uh, this release, if you get, yeah, here it is. You press the dot, do, 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 and then you press it twice and it goes crazy. Just dots crazy. You couldn't even dot that fast with your hand. But anyway, um, see, I, I lost my thought there. Uh, yeah, anyway, anyway, anyway. Oh, I hate when I say that. You can leave spaces. Spaces will create the look of texture if you just leave a space where nothing is in that space. I decided to uh, make it so that he was an older panda and he has no hair on top of his head. <laughs> I'm sorry, just thought of a few people. <laughs> Yeah, where there's no hair on the top of their head. <laughs> and and he's a grandpa panda. And so I just went around and made a circle. And, you know, that's where he's the wise panda. He's always scratching the top of his head when people are asking him all this wisdom. And then he scratched all his fur off his head. <laughs> yeah, I do have a huge imagination. That's why I have so much fun in my room myself. <laughs> coloring and doing a voiceover uh, I'm sure you know it uh, see if somebody was to be at the top of my stairs like just listening they think what's she doing who's in there with her <laughs> absolutely nobody so I took out my four or five reds that I like to work with to make a heart you'll see how I do this uh, this is my combination I use all the time. The R35, 3535, I haven't said that in a long time. The 35, the 59, the 56, and there's the, yeah, 69, and then there's the 89 as well. The 89 is the deepest, 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 and look at that beautiful red. Ooh, yes, I love doing hearts with Copics. I love this combo. I'll leave it on my blog. I am late on my blog. I'm sorry. The last tutorial I did, I have to get over to my blog. Then if you go out of the lines, just grab your white pen and go over top of it and nobody's the wiser. So there you go. And now I want to do this little love banner because that goes on my card. Love. Yes. And do the same thing. You just don't have to use all your markers. Just the two of them will be nice, the dark and the light. Uh, it's really a small image but it has a wow impact, doesn't it? Then I always trace it out with a black Copic friendly marker. And now I'll put that up there, do the same thing, even though it's eensy teensy. Just take, you know, you need a light and you need a dark. And there's the moon, yes. Why do I always think when I see a moon image of, you know, when, and how's it go, Dean Martin there? The moon hits your eyes like a big pizza pie. That's a more. Oh, yeah. That's my morning singing. <laughs> I haven't even had anything to eat yet. Yeah. And I'm singing and I'm starving. <laughs> I should go make a bologna sandwich or something. You know when you get older, you don't care. It doesn't have to be bacon and eggs for breakfast. I mean, I could put a piece of old pizza in the microwave <laughs> and eat it. Because what? Because what? Because once you're full, who cares what filled you up? You know, as long as it's not gone bad. <laughs> I 
I wouldn't I wouldn't grab anything from the back of my fridge and eat it. <laughs> Just the front. Yeah. Just a little thought there. Yeah, it's early. It's early. So I stamped out these hearts. Are they not crazy cute? They're stitched and then they have that little piece that uh, you know, they're like three quarter hearts. They have with love. And I ended up, when I took the guts out of the With Love little die, I cut around it so that I had the negative. And I did put that on one of my cards. I just absolutely love this. I used up all my little scraps of paper. And you have to remember with the Gemini, I always have to remember this, you turn your dies up. That's why my um, magnetic thingy there looks so cut up because I don't always remember but you know I still use it I use it until it all falls on the floor then I'll get another one in the future so here you have it you can see me the negative part I'm cutting around to make it square and look at those dies a the ones down there in the right right corner how that little piece comes out they're just so original this collection I oohed and odd when I opened up this package. I really did. I think I got it at the end of the, what, what are we on here? I think I got it last Friday. And, um, yeah, what day? Yeah, today's Wednesday. So I've been creating almost every day with it. And I want to get a tutorial up after this every day with a project because I've created with it. I just have to edit voice over them. And you will see all the beautifulness. Now, this here is crazy amazing. There are 35 dies in this set. Count them. 35. And each of them are cute, cute. You have that uh, beautiful, um, I don't even know the word for that canopy thing. Oh yeah, two papers times two. First time down. Woo! I'm excited. Uh, two of 35 stamps. And then you have that gate thingy, that cascade flower holder thing. <laughs> Can't remember the word for that. Um, uh, it'll come to me. It'll come to me. And then, um, there you go. See how I have another paper under there? I probably have 14 stacks of paper. Or no, four. <laughs> I was close, wasn't I? Four stacks of paper. But what I wanted to say is the little images are so individual and gorgeous that you could think of cards. This is why I do this. This is why I stamp everything. I color everything and I lay it out because because my mind will think of things um, when it's all done, it's hard for me to look at stamps and say, okay, I'm going to use that one stamp. Uh, let's go over there and use that and then make the card because what if I wanted to add something that was from the stamp? Oh, this is funny. <laughs> I have to make room for my Copics. I'm going to Copic color and my Copics, I have an island, like a kitchen island that I work up in my craft room and I have them further back in the background. So I had to move everything to get the, I have three of these to get them in three containers I got at the thrift store. They're wonderful because they slant down just enough that my Copics lay down in, in just a little angle to where they're not perfectly straight or facing out so that they fall out. So I put them all around me. Yes, here we go. Here's another one. And they're all organized as far as my R's or my RB's or my, you know, I have them all separated. That's why there's three of them, so that I can grab whatever markers that I want. And, um, oh, I can't show you this. I have this in here, but this is for another card. I hope I cut this off. What am I doing here? I can't show you. Oh, whew. I thought I was going to show you how I colored those cute that cute little couple because the coloring turned out fantabulous. I was so happy with it. Here I'm doing this, um, oh, I'm, I've got to find out what the name of that thing is, that carousel thing that uh, goes, you know, in your garden. 
and it uh, has flowers and vines and all kinds of things. Oh, I'm using the T, the T1, the T3, the T family. I moved from the cool C's to the T's. Yes, and I'm just shading it. Grays are lovely to work with, aren't they? You can't go wrong. Just place it on there, just make a bunch of lines. Dark to one side, light to the other, and you're in. You look professional. There, there's nothing to it. And uh, I'm having trouble here showing you the markers that I'm... Oh, there they go. What about over there? So T1, T3, T4, T5. That's what I chose out of there. There's, there's a few T's too, you know? Made me want to have a T. <laughs> yeah. So here I go. I'm just like, this is just fun coloring. I'm not uh, losing my mind trying to think about where the shading goes. I never have lost my mind where the shading goes. It doesn't matter because if it's a fence, I'm going to put wood lines in it. And uh, that's going to just clear up any mistakes that I make as far as looking like I know what I'm doing. I always tell you, I don't know what I'm doing. I experiment. That's what I do. And then I grabbed a Copic Friendly uh, fine liner and I made some lines and some circles and some diddly doo dads and it looks like wood, doesn't it? Gray wood. Weathered wood. Love weathered wood. Yes. And there you have it. And I'm going to do the same thing. Yep, just some wood. It's going to look like a nice aged old whatever this is. Uh... Oh, I'm going to find out what it is. Just a minute. I didn't even have to look it up. All of a sudden I went to go and look it up on Google and a trellis came to my brain. Isn't it a trellis? Okay, this is the fun part. Love, love, love this. Okay, so this is what you do. I took some embossing paste. It was, uh, I think, Heidi Swap embossing paste and a texture paste, excuse me. It was texture paste, not embossing paste, it was texture paste. I took the stencil that matches this dye it matches the dye, the embossed, uh, debossed dye with the stitches around it. I rubbed some of the gold just with my with my finger up and down, up and down, up and down, left it to look kind of vintage, mixed media, just kind of messy. Then I took the stencil and I put it over the emboss because the images are the same. And I took my finger and I squirted out some of this texture paste. You can use any texture paste. And looky, looky, with the gold. Is this not fabulous? I love it. This is what made my thought process go crazy on how I was going to design this card. And another card. I did two in one. So there I squirted out this gold texture paste. And isn't it soft? It's so yummy and it dries doesn't flatten out. It's beautiful. So here I just wanted it random because I knew I was going to put the wreath on there. And uh, I was going to use the trellis. And um, yeah. And then lift it up and looky looky. I and I'm going to do shakers. Two shakers. A shaker under the wreath and a shaker under the trellis. Wait till you see it. And, and it's going to be individual and it's going to be lovely. Um, back to the pan pastels. Here we go. Look at this bright red. Oh, it's scrumptious. And pan pastels go a long, long way on one, you know, swipe on the pan. I haven't used my pan pastels. I did a video where I did a scene for the very first time. An artist came on and showed this scene. Uh, it was a wilderness thing with uh, beautiful... Uh, geysers and all that and so I did it and loved it I fell in love with pan pastels and then look at just grab a brush and you can move those without having to rub them just so that you get the ombre look going swishing from uh, right over to the left and there you have it this is what I did I wanted enough card space to have a step down you know those step down uh, living rooms you know you have to walk up two stairs or whatever I wanted to have like a stair step effect and I wanted to ghost it with gold so I grabbed my gold pan pastel right here and I moved my stencil just a tad so I could see some white off to the side and I did 
the ghosting with the gold because it matches the gold I just did with the stencil and the uh, beautiful embossing for uh, the die, the embossed die. So look at that. And uh, be careful you don't rub too much until you put your fixative. And I use the Grumbacher fixative spray. It will darken up your image, which is beautiful. It almost gives the look of glossy accents without having that really, um, you know, it's more of a wax sheen, shine, a sheen shine. And, oh yeah, the gold is just wow factor with uh, with this red, this poppy red. So here I have to spray it to fix it in there. You don't, there it is, Grumbacher. I got it at Michael's and then just hold up something while I do it. And see how it just brings it to life? Whoa, yeah. It's going nowhere. You're going to be able to rub this and that pan pastel is not the moving. But look at my mat. <laughs> That's my new mat. I, I almost lost my mind. So I grabbed about five things to try and clean it. You know, all these cleaners, my spray bathroom clean, everything. Then all of a sudden I looked over and I saw my little alcohol wipes. And I took a couple of them that all that came off. All that. I went to all that trouble finding all of my um, hidden cleaning supplies. <laughs> I know I have some cleaning supplies. Where are they? I gotta find them. <laughs> oh dear. Isn't it? I don't know if you're like me, but anyway. Okay, now I wanted to have one bevel. I wanted the left hand gold side to be beveled. I wanted a small bevel. I'd say, um, here I'm just pressing in so I can cut the bottom off uh, to make it even here. And then you're going to hold the acetate to the place where you want the bevel to be and then score it. So if you want the bevel, you know, I had to realize and remember that I'm putting a shaker under my bevel. So there's what I'm going to bevel right here. So I took the one side and I made about a half, I don't know, a quarter of an inch, a quarter of an inch line to the left on the acetate. I scored it that quarter of an inch and then I pressed it down so that it will fit behind the gold here. So, uh, and that, um, then I did the same thing on the other side. Now, it doesn't matter how, you know, if you scored it uh, with an inch on one side. It doesn't matter because you're not going to see it. It's on the back side, right? So, take your score tool, um, press down here, uh, score it, and then press it down. And then we're going to add some double-sided tape to put my acetate on the back because I don't want my beads falling out the hole. <laughs> I've done that before where I forgot the acetate. Who does that? Then I put the beads down. I put that on it and I picked it up. Now <laughs> my beads fell out. <laughs> I forgot just one step. I just forgot this step. Don't be hard on me. It was only one step. Yeah, the most important step, Carol. Now, once we get this tacked down, it's so funny, you know, when I was first started crafting, started crafting, when I first started to crafting, I used to get so messed up on how to make a shaker, you know, and it's so easy. I don't know what it was, you know, whether I thought you had to put the raised area for your acetate or uh, whatever, but it's once you get that down, and if you're doing a, like a heart, so to speak, like with the actual image shaped like a heart, it's nice to take the top off of your double-sided raised tape. Now I had these, um, they're not prills, I was going to use my prills, but they're just beads, just tiny beads, and then I had the crystal, they're called crystal glaze, and <laughs> uh, mistake, mistake number 422 folks. Uh, yeah, I ripped it on the top, but I glued that down. That's why we buy glue. You know, you want to use the glue, so just make a few mistakes. And then I thought, you know, I like it to the side like this. My mistake was I didn't measure the card and measure it to be in the center. But that's okay. I like it offset. Nothing in uh, card making that I can think of should be even. <laughs> yes. So I loved this little leaf. Um, uh, 
die that has the leaves going around like a chain, you know. It, it's so cute that I covered one of the um, little thingies up there, some of the, what do you call the berries. Mm -hmm. Then I grabbed my gold thread. I love this gold thread because it just glitters. It's and it's so fine. So I'm going to tell you, this is though when you get through this, you'll see that um, I made a mistake here, but that's okay. I remedied it. I love mistakes. I really grow from mistakes. I get to learn different things to be able to correct them and not take up hours of my time because I made the mistake, you know. So I wanted this to, uh, I'm just, I had some uh, LDRS Creative Red Ink already on my um, brush. So I decided to just brush it to give that gold a little hue of uh, background red. And here I'm doing the bevel. So you want to put double-sided tape on each side of the bevel that you're folding in. That's going to be on the back side. Now, did I tell you the measurements? It's five and a half by seven and uh, five and a half, seven inches long and five and a half inches across. And this is the first uh, portion of it, which is I think an A2 size for this um, die. Let me check here. It is, uh, while we're looking at this bevel here, the actual die here is, I have to move everything out of the way because I have everything in front of me. The uh, die is six inches by five and a half right here, this portion. So the actual card size that we're making the full card is five and a half by seven. So see how you're going to put this five and a half inches there and you're going to have a few, you know, an inch and a half, and a half, six, seven, yeah, an inch and a half on the right hand side where all those gorgeous flowers are with the ghosted gold um, on the flowers with the beautiful, beautiful poppy red. Matches that paper beautifully, doesn't it? That's behind it. And then I wanted to put the trellis on here and I wanted to make it a shaker. So you're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna put your tape and then your acetate over top. And then you're gonna follow the same procedure. I use the double-sided thin tape by Doris and put it on there. I love taking the top of it off because it forms beautifully, which you don't have to worry about here because you're only going across the top trellis. And I think it pretty well works without taking the lid off the tape. Just go stir, you know, you want to weave it a little bit there, Carol. And all the way down and then one at the bottom so that, don't forget that bottom piece. Or you're going to lose all your pearls or your, uh, it's not going to be fun. All those little things are going to be rolling around. Yes. So I just did my job. I took the garbage out. I had six bags and I like to do them. I walked out the farmhouse laneway big long laneway and I like to do it. I don't want my husband, anybody doing my garbage. That's my exercise out the uh, the lane. I, I walk it out to the lane. So much ice. It's stinking freezing. You know the stinking freezing? That's really cold. It's minus 12 I think today. It's ice all over the place and you know it's like crunch crunch when you walk. I love it. It's so refreshing. Excuse me. So then I uh, brought all the garbage out, three in one hand, three bags in the other, because I don't want to make two trips. It's a long laneway. And it was lovely. That fresh air, I'm just uh, alive with the sound of crackling snow and ice. Yes. So now, oh, look at this, the flagged sentiment. I love it. I used one, but it was crooked. So I go to take it off and it, that glue, I'm telling you, um, that art glitter glue, you're not getting it back up. So I ripped it, of course, it ripped. Yeah, just rip it off, start again. And then I found one that worked and it said, uh, tch, where's my card here? Um, over the moon for you, something like that. I put my card away. And I put that in there and then, you see, I could put the moon up there without having to stop because I already colored it. I colored all the images at the beginning. Everything is pre-made. My bevel was the perfect size for the shaker. It, uh, I'd say it's probably, um, it's less than a quarter of an inch up 
uh, the bevel. It's just worked out perfect. It's not too much. And even if you sent it in the mail, just slide it to one side and you'll be fine uh, when you put it in the envelope. Because I did make an envelope for this, but I forgot to press my camcorder on play when I made it for you. So you're going to see it in the pictures. I apologize. And there's the beautiful moon. Yes, it's like, um, it's gorgeous. I love it. I hope it colored that one. And I put the glass glitter in this one. It just made sense because... I wanted you to see the background underneath the trellis. It sparkled, it's romantic, the gold. I was gonna put flowers too, but you know what? Just give her chocolates. Flowers and chocolates, mm, that's a little much, don't you think? Why am I getting all this stuff? Mm, I don't understand this. <laughs> yeah, my husband and I have been together 50 years, so I don't double think. You can send me chocolates, flowers, uh, a coupon for a store for an outfit you can send me whatever you want I'm not questioning it I just say thank you so much yeah but I wanted that key in there how can you have a locket with a key and with an opening and not have a key with it so this is what I did because it had the bevel I put a little bit of glue on it art glitter glue because I knew it because I knew it was going to but watch, ooh, it's got that fat part on my tweezers. And I don't want to wreck my bet ball. So I got it in there and then I grabbed a file. I needed a hand here. I needed a third hand. There we go. The file set it there. Don't touch it. Let it dry. You need about three seconds for it to dry. And look at, and then it goes back and forth. And as it goes back and forth underneath that bevel, it that sparkly gold thread, oh yeah. Then I got out my stickles. This is stash, isn't it? Stickles. I always forget about my stickles because they're at the end of my island in a cupboard. And I forget about them, but I didn't hear. I put beautiful dark gray stickles down there. One on each side of my flagged sentiment. And you really want to be using tape when you're putting this baby down on your five and a half by seven inches. You know, I had to make my own card base and then I just, I did it on the side of the fold over so you can't see that fold. That's going to be the front of my card there. So I went, I did that. I got all the, I didn't glue it down yet because of the bevel. I don't want to squish it. I took my stencil, this stencil, I love it. I did not clean my stencil. So when I went and got the, uh, that beautiful gray ink, it's called LDRS Creative, um, Hybrid ink, it's called Alloy, beautiful gray. And some of the pink, because I didn't wash the stencil, came off and oh my, look at that. Talk about ombre and a beautiful look, I love it. That's kind of like the wind is taking those flowers and it's heading to the right. Right to the right hand side. Oh yeah, I got too much fresh air. <laughs> I'm wide awake. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go on my next uh, tutorial. On my next card, you're going to love that too. You're going to love that card. Well, you're going to love the release. You know, I don't want to be bragging about my, my cards. You're just going to love it. Um, I, I wouldn't put it on YouTube if I didn't love my own work. You know, you can't put something up that you're not happy with. It's just, uh, I'm not an A2 size card maker. We all know that. My videos are never going to be 15 minutes long unless I made a mistake and forgot to edit the rest of the 45 minutes. <laughs> but yes, the next cards to this release are not going to be this long because I've already done all the coloring. And then if you want to see how I colored all the elements that I used, you can go back to this video. Now I got out some Nouveau glitter paste. It was the exact color of that aloe, aloe alloy gray alloy and um and the pink isn't that precious i love that i put two of the die cut hearts that come in one of the die uh, that one comes in the open heart die it's eight dice in one and it's called open heart 8101 i'll leave all the links and everything i promise you i'll work on that today to get it uh my this video on my blog once it uploads to YouTube. So here we go. Um, now I, because I didn't put a gusset, 
I did not put another line in there because I had, you know, this is thick cardstock. This is 140 pound white cardstock that I make my uh, card bases out of. So you do need to make, you know, go down and score it one more line so you have a little bit of room in there. And I didn't. So I just decided to grab some ribbon. And I found the gold, but the gold was too much. It didn't match the gold in the card. So that was out, you know. That was like, sorry, got to go back in your drawer. I found this cream one with the gold down the sides. So measure it. Do, 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 do. And, and then there, no, no, that's not right, Carol. There's more on the bottom than the top. You got to move it down. See? Yeah, sometimes your eye just knows these things. And, um, yeah, that sticky, that roll of uh, double-sided roll, that is so super sticky. But I still use the art glitter glue. I do not want this coming unglued. Especially when I reach my goal of 20,000 subscribers, I have a lot of things I've created I want to give away. So I want to make sure that somebody gets something in one piece. And this is, don't you love it? I love the bevel on the, the you know, it's larger. You're using the whole die on the left side there that, uh, let me see. It's not with all my love. It is the with all my love heart die and uh, emboss. It embosses. It die cuts with the stitch. Then it embosses all of the hearts in the center. Just glorious. Oh, I want to stamp my uh, just my stamp. I got at BD's. It says created especially for you by Carol Held. I put it on the bottom. I didn't put any embossing powder on it. I just took my heat tool to make sure it was dry. I put this white heart, very subtle, very subtle on the back. And then I'm going to put that page onto my um, actual card base. You know I like my cards heavy and thick. It doesn't matter if I was to do an A2 size card, I would make I would put pages on top of the pages. I just love the thickness. Then you tie it in a bow, my friends, and i uh, cutting it off so that it looks good. You know, it's not too long. Well, here we go, my friends. We're coming down to making the envelope. What I did is LDRS Creative has masking pages that you can purchase. And I took some of the masking. I took the stitched heart die, the 8117 stitched hearts. They're double stitched. They're beautiful. And I did the largest heart and I put it in the center of my envelope and then I took my, with all my heart, um, no, excuse me, you want to use the stencil. That's with all my heart stencil, 3199. And I put uh, the stencil on there. I grabbed the same inks, the alloy, the red, and the I sweeped it all across uh, top of the stencil heart. Then I removed the heart, and uh, here I'm just showing you all the sprinklies with the shakers. Then you open it up, has the two hearts facing out like a butterfly, says I love you, and then the back. Tie it up, put it in the pretty envelope, and you have one project with all of these beautiful, beautiful dies and stamps. They're amazing. Thank you so much. I do appreciate being a design team member for LDRS Creative. Angie, HSN, check it out. I'll leave all the links. So there you have it, a double shaker. And I'm, yes, it's completed. I'm happy with it. And you take care, everybody. Have a blessed week. Enjoy the pictures. Mm -hmm.